Every week I get many emails asking me to promote certain supplements. Or I get questions about what supplements I think are good and worthwhile to take. If a supplement is popular, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for you or that it will work. In this video, I'm going to outline you some of the most popular supplements that I'm not taking and why. So make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. The first supplement is urolithin A. Urolithin A is a metabolite produced by the gut bacteria. The company that has the patent for urolithin A is Timeline Nutrition that sells Mitopure and it's quite hyped up at the moment. I made a recent video breaking down urolithin A and its deceptive marketing claims so you can check it out here. Basically, they say that urethane A increases muscle strength by 12% and endurance by 17% based on human clinical trials that they've done. The study about endurance found that four months of urolithin A at a dose of 1000 milligrams per day resulted in no significant difference in the six minute walking test compared to placebo. They made the conclusion that urolithin A increases endurance by a checkup at the middle of the study at the two month mark. The urolithin A group saw some improvements in submaximal muscle contractions at 70% max effort compared to the placebo group. However, by the fourth month mark, the placebo group's endurance had also increased to a similar level as the urolithin A group, so there was no statistical difference between them. Basically, if you wanted to see your endurance increase by 17%, then you could have just done nothing. You could have just waited until the end of the study and you would have gotten the same effects as if you had taken urolithin A. So this study didn't find that Mitopure increases endurance at all. They didn't find any difference in the six minute walking test and they found no endurance benefits based on this other test that they did. But the claim that it increases your endurance by 17% came from the middle point of the study in the two month mark. But if you waited until the end of the study, you waited two months more, you would have gotten the same benefits. So it's very deceptive and misleading to say that Mitopure increased endurance by 17%. Yes, it did at the middle of the study, but not by the end of the study. When it comes to muscle strength, then this claim is based on a 12% increase in hamstring peak torque, which they saw in another trial where they gave people 1000 milligrams of Mitopure for four months. When they looked at grip strength to assess upper body strength, then there was no statistical difference between the groups. Although the 1000 milligram group showed a slight trend towards improvement. However, it wasn't statistically different from placebo. So the results aren't massive for lower body strength and there's no difference in upper body strength based on this study. So yes, maybe it does increase your hamstring torque by 12%, but you could get much more benefits from just regular exercise. In this study, they didn't know exercise and these people weren't particularly fit based on their baseline data. They were kind of average people so they weren't even exercising before the study and they didn't exercise during the study either. But if you just start to implement resistance training, then you would see much greater results in your hamstring strength, lower body strength, as well as upper body strength. The problem with all of this is that Mitopure costs $125 per month and based on the evidence that they themselves have done or outlined, then uh, Mitopure isn't going to increase endurance and it might increase hamstring peak torque by 12% which again, I don't know if you want to pay $125 for. So in my opinion, the reason I'm not taking it is because the results are not very impressive and it's super expensive. The second supplement I think is a massive waste of money is Resuratrol. It's the first of these hyped up longevity supplements that's failed to show any real benefit to otherwise healthy individuals. GlaxoSmithKline bought David Sinclair's company for $720 million in 2007 to start making Resuratrol, but they canceled and shut down the company five years later. So if a big pharma giant like GlaxoSmithKline has decided that we don't want to continue researching resveratrol, we don't want to do anything about it anymore. So I think that hints what's the actual effects of resveratrol. Initially, it was believed to be the miracle molecule people thought is going to cure aging, but GlaxoSmithKline took the ill, <laughs> they swallowed $720 million and they stopped working on resveratrol. Basically, the life extension studies on resveratrol have been quite flawed and the original findings haven't been replicated. What's more, there's studies that resveratrol decreases VO2 max in older men and it decreases the levels of androgen precursors, which are important for muscle growth. Both VO2 max and muscle mass are linked to longevity, so you don't want to hinder those. Now, there are interesting studies that resveratrol improves blood sugar, triglycerides, and cholesterol, but the effects are more significant in people with type 2 diabetes. Coincidentally, that's the only circumstance under which resveratrol has been found to extend lifespan in animals, when they're super obese and metabolically sick. 
But if you're an otherwise healthy people who exercises, then resveratrol appears to be a net negative. The third supplement is spermidine. Spermidine has become popular because it's an autophagy activator, and that's true. So it might help to eliminate cellular debris and other waste material that accumulates during aging. The reason spermidine is considered a longevity supplement is because there's a 2018 observational study that found that higher dietary spermidine intake is linked to a lower mortality risk. The people who consumed over 11.6 milligrams of spermidine a day from diet dietary sources like cheese, mushrooms, natto, vegetables, etc. had a 30% lower mortality risk than those who ate less than 9.1 milligrams per day. There are other studies with similar results, but the key word here is that it's dietary spermidine, not supplemental spermidine. There's no evidence that supplemental spermidine would give you the same longevity benefits. In fact, the few clinical trials done on spermidine have found that high-dose spermidine supplementation at a dose of 15 milligrams a day doesn't raise blood or saliva spermidine levels in healthy adults. And another 2022 clinical trial on older people found that supplemental spermidine for 12 months didn't improve cognition. There is one study that found that spermidine supplementation in men and women reduced cortisol and increased DHEA levels. But it was a very small study of only eight women and seven men. So I think it's much more important to focus on the dietary spermidine, not the supplemental form, because that's where the evidence is. Foods that have spermidine are just healthy foods, and you could say that it's a case of healthy user bias, but you certainly certainly can't make a mental leap and conclude that supplemental spermidine is going to be any good, at least not based on the evidence right now. I want to take a quick break to let you know that my new book, The Longevity Leap, is now available. You can get it from Amazon. The Longevity Leap is an evidence-based guide to slowing down biological aging and adding healthy years to your life. It has 24 chapters ranging from exercise, diet, and the biology of aging. And it covers all the major chronic diseases and what are the important biomarkers to measure. If you've ordered the book, you can also get two bonus chapters, one about skin anti-aging and the other one about my personal routines. Send me an email to seem at seamland.com with the receipt and I'll send you the bonus chapters. The fourth popular supplement I'm not taking is a multivitamin. There is evidence of regular multivitamin and mineral supplementation having positive effects on cognitive performance and memory, as shown by several randomized controlled trials over the past few years. However, a recent 2024 study found that multivitamin use in three US prospective cohorts followed up for up to 24-7 years was associated with a small 4% higher risk of mortality and a 6% higher risk of heart disease death. Now, this might sound alarming, but if you look at the data, then this result might have been because of some inconsistencies or bias in the data. But regardless, what they didn't find was that multivitamin would reduce mortality risk. Now, I don't think that the multivitamin is inherently harmful. And I do think that for the elderly people, supplementing some multivitamin can be like a good insurance policy to make sure that they do get some adequate amount of vitamins and minerals every day. The problem is that there is no gold standard for multivitamins. There is no specific formula for multivitamins. Every company has their own ratios of different vitamins and minerals, so you don't necessarily know what's the best formula out there. And all the studies that are done on the multivitamins as well, they use different ratios and different formulas. So again, there's no gold standard for the multivitamin. So I don't think that it's worthwhile for me. The last supplement that's quite popular is calcium alpha ketoglutarate or calcium AKG. There are mouse studies showing that calcium AKG extends lifespan in mice. And a 2021 clinical trial found that calcium AKG supplementation for seven months resulted in an eight year reduction in biological age as measured by a DNA methylation test now that sounds quite amazing to be eight years younger in only seven months. But the problem is that this is only a single study and the study was done by the company that owns the supplement. So it has a lot of uh, conflicts of interest as well. And lastly, we don't necessarily know, okay, what does it mean to have a DNA methylation age that is eight years younger? So there's no like functional outcomes or there's no like endpoints that we're certain of what does it mean? That's exactly what another clinical trial called ABLE seeks to do. They're going to measure the biological age in older people after taking calcium EKG, and they're going to measure functional outcomes like grip strength, arterial stiffness, etc. But the study isn't out yet, so we have to wait a year or two until it's published. So I'm not making any conclusions based on calcium AKG yet. I'm waiting for this study and some more clinical trials in the future. AKG is involved in the metabolism and energy production. AKG levels decline with age by about tenfold after the age of 40, which makes it plausible that supplementation could have health benefits. There are indeed several human clinical trials over the past few decades that have shown that AKG helps with wound healing, immunity, and faster recovery from surgeries. A 2022 review on AKG stated that a few studies published in the 
1980s and 1990s in humans suggested the potential benefits of AKG in muscle growth, wound healing, and promoting faster recovery after surgery. So far, there are no recently published studies demonstrating the role of AKG in treating aging and age-related diseases. Hence, further clinical studies are required to better understand the role of AKG in humans. Overall, I think AKG is interesting, but we definitely need more trials in the future. The results so far aren't very promising and they're not very consistent. And the supplement is also very expensive, so I don't think it's worthwhile to take right now. So these are some of the most popular supplements out there that I'm not taking. Of course, there are a few other supplements that are very popular, but I'm not taking. And there are some popular supplements that I am taking because they actually work such as creatine. If you want to know the supplements I'm taking, then check out my free supplement list in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.